Today, on Running to Him. Even when thrust into something seemingly evil through no action of our own, God is with us. Today's reading from the reading plan is Genesis 37, 18 through 36, and we will concentrate on verses 25 through 27. Genesis 37, verses 25 through 27 says, Then they sat down to eat a meal. And as each raised their eyes and looked, behold, a caravan of Ishmaelites was coming from Gilead, with their camels bearing aromatic gum and balm and myrrh, on their way to bring them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brother, What profit is us for us to kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and not lay hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. Now the story of Joseph continues, and he comes upon his brothers who have plotted against him. Initially they sought to kill him, but relented when Reuben suggested that they place him in a pit, thinking that he, Reuben, would come back later on and rescue him, and by doing so, restore some kind of relationship with his father. A group of Midianite traders came by, and the brothers decided that it would be more profitable for them to sell Joseph rather than just let him die, so they sold him to the traders. Now, there's a little bit of controversy about who the traders were. As you read the passage, you'll find the Ishmaelites and Midianites mentioned. Jewish and Christian commentaries believe that these two names were used interchangeably so that there's no mistake in the text. This usage of both terms is another reason that I think that the Torah is historically accurate and inerrant, as it's a collection of five books. It is written in the history of the day. If it were not so, a redactor or editor would have changed the names of the story to correct the mistake. We might also focus uh, for a minute on that Judah, in his seeming kind heart, suggests that they might not kill Joseph, but they might sell him as a slave. The intonation and suggestion is that Joseph's punishment would be much more severe, and the brothers would not feel as much guilt if they killed him. So, in a way, Judah's suggestion a greater punishment, at least in the length of the punishment rather than death. I would also like to comment on Joseph's faith in God. Although it is not directly stated, Joseph didn't go on a pity party when sold. We see in the later chapters that he still expressed faith in God's promises and, as far as we can tell, lived a life that was God-glorifying and pleasing. We are to look to God for his guidance in our lives, no matter what the circumstances. If we live our lives so that we are seeking God's will, then no matter what the circumstance is, we will always trust God for the outcome. Romans eight thirty eight and 39 teaches us that there is nothing that can be separating us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We must rely on that promise when we are in times of struggle. Joseph was about to start a journey that would bring him abject poverty in prison and later immense wealth and power in Egypt. God was with him the entire time, both in poverty and wealth. If we are trusting him, he will show us the same in our lives. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at Phineas Jacobus at runningtohim.net.